Welcome to the fourth part of the math note series. Today we're going to be looking at round, floor, ceiling, fraction, and modulo. I'm going to be using uh, decimals, graphing calculator, to show you what each of these does. So the first one we're going to be looking at is the round. So what the round does, it takes a value in and it's going to give you an integer. That's why you can see these are all integers, the y values. And if it's z less than 0 0.5, it's going to round down. And 0 0.5 and greater, it's going to round up. So at 0 0.5, well, in this, in the decimals implementation, it does it the other way around. But in Blender, it's going to round up if it's 0 0.5. Next one is ceiling. The difference between ceiling and round is the ceiling will just take which the greatest or the smallest integer that's greater than it. So anything that's less than between zero and one will go to one. Anything that's between one and two will go to two and so forth. So you get this sort of step. And the floor does the opposite thing. It takes whichever one is smaller. So anything between zero and one will become zero. Anything between one and two will become one and so forth. Um, then there's two important ones, the modulo, which will take in the result when you divide by the second. So it takes two parameters. The first one I've just named x and the second one I've made it y. So it's going to divide by a and then give you the remainder. So as you can see, the values aren't limited between 0 and 1. The values are limited between 0 and the remainder. And it's also in steps. And then the last one is the fraction. And the fraction will do the same thing as the modulo, but it will give you a value between 0 and 1. So it's, if you have a number like 7.598, it's going to give you 0.598, which is just the fractional part of your number. So I can show you. As you can see, the fraction is always limited between 0 and 1. The fraction is not in decimals, but this is a quick implementation. And why are these useful? Well, as you can see, every time, so if we change this value from maybe to 2, we get a value from 0 to 1 every 2x values. So, th in that way, we can repeat a pattern and we can create tiling. So, the fraction part is really useful for creating tiling, and the other ones we can use it as well. So, for the pixel, I actually use ceiling. So, let me just quickly um, mute. So let's take a look at what is inside the pixel. So I'm multiplying it by the pixelate value. So original the values were between 0 and 1, but by multiplying, um, we're getting values between 0 and whatever pixelate is. So in this case, it's 10. So this will be still 0, and this will be 10. Now I'm using vector math, but the multiply is just going to multiply the x, y, and z by separately by um, 10. Then the ceiling, it will take the top part, but I could change this to maybe a floor, and it will take the bottom part. It, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, it, it has the same effect, but it depends on what you want. If you change it to fraction, you can see that each of these are like their mini are like mini grids themselves. And that is how you can create a tiling because this goes from zero to one and this goes from zero to one. Well, this goes from zero to one and this goes from zero to one and so forth. So each of these um, are like their own UV map. And with modulo, we can do the same thing, but then you have to add in one. And if you do modulo one, you get the same thing as if you just had done fraction, you can also do, for example, modulo um, 
2 and then the values will be between 0 and 2 usually we use fraction and then so the classic trick is just to multiply by a value and then take the fraction to repeat it that many times and then at the end I'm also dividing by the value because if I don't do that this will be 10 and this will be um, 0 but it's nice to keep values between the 0 to 1 range so 